Good day grade 10s, welcome to the third part of the exam paper that we're going through and we're still on long questions. It says a bullet fired from a snaffle rifle one kilometer away takes 3.4 seconds to whiz past Isidore's ear. Calculate the speed of the bullet. Okay, calculate the speed of the bullet. Okay, so we're going to assume that the bullet hasn't slowing down at all and it's traveling at a constant velocity. And we know, therefore, that velocity equals change in displacement over change in time. And the displacement at the moment is one kilometer. But what is wrong with that? What's wrong with that is that we need it to be in meters. So one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. That makes it easy. So velocity, the velocity of the bullet, let's try again, the velocity of the bullet equals the change in displacement, which is a thousand, over the time it took, which is three comma four seven, which equals what? Let's get out our calculators. So it's one thousand divided by three comma four seven and that is equal to 288,18. So it's 288,18 meters per second. So that's how fast it was traveling, 288,18 meters per second. Now it says, if the speed of sound is 343 meters per second, will Isidore hear the rifle shot? Give a reason for your answer. And the correct answer is yes, he will. And why will he? Because the rifle shot, I mean the speed of sound, is faster than the speed of the bullet. So therefore he will hear the sound. He will hear the sound. Why? Because the speed of sound is faster than the speed of the bullet. Now it says, um, hear it. Okay. Would Isidore hear the shot if she, sorry, if he and the sniper were both in space? Give a reason for your answer. And the answer is no. And why not? Because sound doesn't travel in a vacuum. Doesn't travel in a vacuum sound doesn't travel in a vacuum. So therefore, even though he will see the shot, he will not hear the shot. Right, let's see the next question. It says Peter breaks his arm rock climbing and goes to have x-rays taken. X-rays emitted by the x-ray machine have a wavelength of 1.5 times 10 to the minus 11 meters. So wavelength is 1,5, sorry, 1,5 times by 10 to the minus 11 meters. Now grade 10 what I always do when I'm doing these questions is I either underline or I highlight the information that they're given us. And then what I also do is I write down the data so that it makes it easier for me when I have to look at the questions. So the first question says calculate the frequency, the frequency of the wavelength. So now, if you look on your formula sheets, you will see there's an equation that says C is equal to lambda F, where C is the speed of light and is 3 times by 10 to the 8 meters per second, right? So if we've got C and we've got lambda from that, do you agree we can get frequency? Right, so let's rearrange for frequency. If C equals lambda times frequency, then frequency is going to equal to C divided by lambda. All I'm doing is taking the lambda under there and rearranging. So the frequency is going to be 3 times by 10 to the power of 8, all over 1 comma 5 times by 10 to the minus 11. So let's pop it in our calculators. So we've got 3 exponent 8 all divided by 1.5 exponent negative 11. And what do we get? We get 2 times by 10 to the 19. So it's 2 times by 10 to the 19. And what is frequency measured in? It is measured in hertz. So please always remember to fill in your unit. Now it says calculate the energy of the x-ray photons. Calculate the energy of the x-ray photons. So when you're thinking energy, you should be thinking the equation E is equal to HF. E is equal to HF, where H is Planck's constant. It's on the formula sheet and it's 6,63 times by 10 to the minus 34. So that you have got it, you've been given this. Frequency we've just worked out, it's 2 
times by 10 to the 19. So yes, we can work out the energy. So energy is equal to 6 comma 6, 3 times by 10 to the minus 34 all multiplied by 2 times by 10 to the 19. So let's get out our calculators again and multiply this up. So we have 6.63 exponent negative 34 times 2 exponent 19 and that becomes 1.326 times 10 to the negative 14. Remember grade 10 we always round off to what? To two decimal places. So we look at the 6 and the 6 makes the 3 go up. So it's 1,33 times 10 to the minus 14. So it's 1,33 times 10 to the minus 14. And we haven't finished because we need to put the unit in. And what are we calculating? We're calculating energy and energy is measured in joules. Right, please join me for the final part of the paper one preparation in the next lesson. Have a great day.